Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Hope you're all doing well. So, uh, as I said last night, I, I think what I want to do today is to uh, teach you a particular uh, practice that is uh, called experiencing the whole body with the breath. And uh, this is, uh, depending on, the, uh, on how far along you've progressed in your practice, um, this may not be something that uh, you uh, are, are able to do or, or want to do uh, right now, but it is, uh, if you learn and understand it, it's something that you can uh, use later on when it becomes more appropriate. But it's, it's certainly worth wor learning and worth trying. Uh, so, I'll explain to you <clears throat> what we're going to do, and I'll also explain to you where it comes from. In, in the very few sutras where uh, the Buddha actually describes how to meditate, he gives uh, instructions that uh, uh, they begin with, uh, uh, when he breathes in long, he knows he breathes in long. When he breathes out long, he knows he breathes out long. When he breathes in short, he knows he breathes in short. And when he breathes out short, he knows he breathes out short. A short breath, of course. And so this is, of course, to be able to do the practice as it's described in these four lines here, you, you have to have enough stability of attention that you're able to follow the breath uh, pretty much uninterruptedly for a reasonable long period of time, and you have enough awareness to notice if this breath is longer or shorter than the last one. So, uh, then the next instruction, uh, it, it's assuming that you have a certain degree of continuity of attention. Okay, so if you don't have that much continuity of attention yet, uh, and uh, that much uh, clarity of awareness, you might find uh, doing this practice that the mind wandering uh, still gets in the way and things like that. But that's all right. As you go along, you'll be able to to uh, utilize it more effectively. The next lines in the Buddha's instructions say. Uh, experiencing the whole body he breathes in, thus he trains himself. Experiencing the whole body he breathes out, uh, thus he trains himself. So, uh, what, what this is describing is, as we say, experiencing the whole body with the breath. So you're not just experience, you're not just following the breath in a small area at the nose or the abdomen. You're actually following the breath through in, in the whole body. Something that meditators uh, experience as as their uh, mindful awareness increases, they find uh, at some point they. Uh, the awareness doesn't just remain focused on a small area, but they have so much awareness that it's hard not to be aware of the breath in other parts of the body at the same time. The other thing that happens is that uh, meditators will become aware of a certain uh, energy in the body that produces sensations. And they may notice that this energy uh, moves, it has an ebb and a flow to it that uh, corresponds to the breath. And so meditators sometimes spontaneously, uh, uh, as uh, they breathe in, they experience the whole body. And as they breathe out, they experience the whole body. But in the Buddha's instruction, he's not just saying, you wait until this happens by itself. In, in the lines that he gave, he said, 
experiencing the whole body he breathes in, thus he trains himself, suggesting that this is a this is a deliberate training practice. So that's what we're going to do, a deliberate training practice that leads to uh, having more of a whole body awareness of the breath. Now the value of this, um, of course, as you start to meditate and you receive the instructions to observe the sensation of the breath, and then the, the instruction is to notice exactly when the in-breath begins and exactly when the out-breath begins. Notice the pause. Notice exactly when the, uh, sorry, did I say that right? Exactly when the in-breath begins, exactly when the in-breath ends. Notice the pause. Then notice exactly when the out-breath begins and when the out-breath ends, and then the pause. And when you first begin to meditate, of course, uh, these sensations are happening so quickly, it's a challenge. It's hard to notice all of this. But what you also observe is by repeatedly attempting to become aware of this, the awareness sharpens up, it increases, and it becomes easier and easier to observe all of these details. This is how, this, this gives you a, a clear uh, understanding of the fact that the mind is able of generating a far stronger awareness than it normally does and that it doesn't take a lot of training to bring that up to a completely new level as compared to what it was before. And so that's what we're doing here. Now if we compare experiencing uh, the breath through a larger part of the body as compared to just the area around the nose or just around the abdomen, uh, we can see that there's something similar here to uh, if we took a flashlight and we shine the beam on an, on an object when the beam of the flashlight is very focused and the full power of the light illuminates that object. And then if we adjust the flashlight so that the beam is spread out and becomes wide, then the light is not as bright. If we want to have the light to be as bright when the beam is sped out over a larger area, there must be greater power to the flashlight. There must be stronger light produced. So it's the same sort of thing here that to, to feel sensations of the breath in a larger area and especially to feel the sensations of the breath in a larger area with the same clarity and the same vividness, this requires that the power of the mindfulness must increase correspondingly. And that is the effect that this training has. Uh, and uh, I think you can probably see how that works. This is a very important and useful effect that comes from this training. Yes? Yeah, well, in that case, we cannot really sense it, sense, you know, use our sensation. We probably need to use uh, imagination. No, what I want you to do, and I'll explain this to you, is initially, yes, there's many parts of your body that you will not be able to detect any real sensation, but I don't want you to imagine something that's not there. I want you to uh, just keep looking for it, uh, and as you practice this over and over, over time, you will, in fact, be able to detect sensations that change with the breath uh, in every part of your body. So don't imagine any. No imagination. Be patient. Let, your power, let the power of your awareness develop to the point where you can, in fact, see them. So, like, the, to use the flashlight beam analogy, we spread the beam wide before we've increased the power of the light. And it's true that uh, especially those objects that are illuminated in the outer edge of the beam will not be able to see. 
but we don't pretend that we see them. Instead, we increase the power of the light until we can see them. Now, the other thing that this practice does is in order to be able to perceive uh, very subtle sensations produced by the breath and to be able to perceive sensations in uh, a larger area, we can't do that at the same time that there's a lot of thinking taking place. The mind cannot have this kind of awareness and at the same time be aware of sounds that are in the background. For that matter, the mind cannot at the same time be aware of the subtle sensations of the breath and still be aware of the ordinary sensations of the body that come from the pressure of the cushion and the touch of your clothing on your skin. So in doing this practice, it forces the mind to become single-pointed. It forces the mind to become so engaged with trying to detect these subtle sensations over a large area that thinking pretty well has to stop for a while and attending to other sensations has to, uh, has to stop for a while. And so this practice not only then increases the power of your uh, mindful awareness, but it also increases your concentration and produces a state of single-pointedness, which when you bring your attention back to the small area of the tip of the nose, it lasts for a while. You'll, you'll, you'll come back to this point and there will be a period of time where, where there are no thoughts all you're aware of is the sensations of the nose, and you're not really aware of sounds or anything else. So, uh, and, and then the thoughts will begin to come in, and the awareness of other things will begin to come in at some point. And then you can go back and repeat this. But this is a way of helping to induce that uh, state of single-pointedness, and then trying to sustain it for as long as you can each time. If we look at this, what you find uh, when you're sitting and meditating, the strongest distractions to the observation of the sensation of the breath are mental objects, the thoughts and feelings and, and emotions, right? The second strongest kind of distraction are bodily sensations. And so, the most difficult distractions to cause to stop are the, th the mental objects, all of the thinking. So this is like a trick to use the second strongest source of, uh, of perception to cause the, uh, cause the thoughts to stop. It's most difficult to, to uh, bring about the cessation of thinking. So it's like a trick. Use all of your mind to focus on bodily sensation. And in that way, the thinking has to be suspended for some time. So that's how it works. That's, that's how it produces its effects. Now how you do the practice is you select a particular area of the body that is small to start with and you examine the sensations are present and you observe them for several breaths and to see do any of these sensations change with the breath and if you become aware of any sensations that do change with the breath then you particularly pay attention to them and you observe them you follow the breath through those sensations if you don't find any sensations that change with the breath you move to another area of the body and explore it in the same way. When you have identified several areas of the body that where you can identify sensations that change with the breath, then you begin to add them together to make a larger and larger area. And finally, 
Once you've been able to identify sensations that change with the breath everywhere in the body, you can expand your awareness to the entire body and experiencing the entire body, you breathe in and breathe out. Now initially, there is a good chance that you that there are parts of your body where you will not become aware of any sensations that change with the breath. Po probably in your hands and your arms, you won't find any sensations that change with the breath initially, but later on you will. In your feet and your lower legs and your thighs, you will probably not find sensations that change with the breath. Quite likely, your scalp and your upper head and your ears, you will not find any sensations that change with the breath in the beginning. But eventually you will. When you first start, you're going to feel the very obvious sensations that are in the area around the nose, that are in the chest, that are in the abdomen. And then when you look closely, you'll find that there are sensations that change with the breath in the upper back and the lower back and the hips. Very subtle movement that occurs, but you can detect it. Also, with, the, uh, with your uh, upper arms, your shoulders and your upper arms, very often you will be able to detect the subtle sensations that change with the breath there. So you can use those uh, initially and then you can keep practicing until you can discover the sensations that change with the breath in the uh, lower arms and the hands and the legs and the feet and the upper part of the head. How long do we stay in one spot before we move on, if we cannot find it? Um, in order to be able to investigate uh, a large area of the body, uh, and for any one time that you're practicing this, only stay on one area for maybe three or four breaths, just to see if you can identify. Now, if you find sensations that do change with the breath, then stay there a little longer, maybe another four or five or six breaths, just to establish those, to establish that awareness clearly in your mind before you move on to another part of the body. And then when you put the different parts of the body back together again, uh, then you, you try to, you, you recall the sensations that you're aware of in that part before, and uh, you become aware of them once again. What if the in the sensation is, you can feel the in but not the out -breath? Very good point. Yes, that will take place, but that's fine. You can still, if you find any sensation that changes with the breath, then let your mind rest on the sensation that's produced by the in-breath, wait, and then that's uh, until that sensation comes with the next in-breath. It doesn't matter if there's not one with the out-breath. That just means that the pause at both ends is very large. <laughs> <laughs> but you think imagine, as, would, would imagination also be a, 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 a trick? Uh, sometimes you imagine that enough, maybe it will happen. Um, Best, be, best, thing, best thing is to uh, just stay with the genuine sensations because some of them will be very subtle. And if you do this practice uh, a number of times over and over, the places where, say for example, you start off with and you feel a, you feel a sensation perhaps just with the in-breath in your upper arm. Okay. And so you... you uh, observe that very closely for a while each time you practice and you start to realize well not only in breath you're now starting to feel out breath sensations there as well what will happen as that occurs is that when you scan the other parts you might also feel now that you can feel some sensation in the upper arm and so then you start including that so rather than trying to force the awareness through imagination, let the power of the awareness develop. And uh, every time you do the practice, check to see if, uh, if, if the, there is more awareness than there was before. Yes? So does it require the longer breath, breath in, breath out? Just, you know, 
just your ordinary breathing. Just don't, don't control the breath and just let it happen as it naturally does. Um, you may very well notice incidentally that in doing this process, the breath does become somewhat deeper, but don't deliberately make that happen. Certain changes take place in the breath related to uh, the, att- the kind of attention that we pay. But as long as you're not deliberately controlling it, you're doing it, it properly. You're just let- letting the body respond to the practice in whatever way that it wants. So. Take, for example, if we observe the, the bad breath, and uh, when the breath comes to here, compared to comes to here, it takes longer. Yes. So it's, this one's in the beginning we can sense it, but uh, here until the, the breath comes here, uh, we can, we, so it should be a longer breath. Yes, there are there are differences, but you don't need to deliberately control the, make those differences happen. The other thing is in doing this, we'll, we'll start with the sensation of the rise and fall of the abdomen to begin with, and we'll use that first. And I'm going to guide you through this. Yes? Um, to follow up on Jackie's question, so um, eventually you said the breath will become natural and it kind of does. Mm-hmm. So the quality or the nature of that quiet down uh, 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 the breath, is that the same as when you go mm-hmm. do the nose meditation? Yes, it's the same. Okay. And to continue to be to have the same awareness uh, 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 means that the, the, the mind must be brighter and, and, and stronger in that regard. Let me just talk a little bit about what you will experience. Eventually, you will start feeling sensations that change with the breath in your hands, in your feet, and in every part of your body. But in the more distant parts, it won't be the same. What you feel here is movement. You know, you feel sensations that are caused by the physical movement of the tissues and the movement of the skin, you know, against your clothing and things like that. The sensations of the breath that you feel in your hands, well, there's not going to be much movement there, or, or your feet. There's not going to be much movement. Uh, and there's not going to be enough movement from, from the, the contraction and relaxation of the muscles of breathing to detect in your feet. But what will you, start, you will start to notice is that there, there is still a sensation of something, as though something moves in and perhaps expands uh, and, and contracts, uh, sort of an expansion or contraction, or some kind of a, a, like an energy moving. As long as you're not imagining it, it's what you want to do, to discover. And it doesn't matter whether it's a physical movement or not. If it's a genuine sensation that you become aware of, then you can follow the breath with that sensation. Okay? So in the process of the scanning, actually, the, the sensation of the breath of the nose just stops. Because we're scanning different parts. That's right. The sensation of the breath from the nose will still be there, but you're not paying attention to it because you're so busy paying attention to something else. But then when you bring your awareness to the whole body, you'll be, feel, be feeling the, the nose and the abdomen and, and, and everything. And of course the nose and the abdomen will be very strong. Um, and you will find that your attention, your awareness can freely move about. Um, Perhaps I'm getting a little ahead of the story. We haven't even tried this the first time, but once you once you have established this practice and are able to uh, hold an awareness of your whole body at one time, you'll even become aware that 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 sometimes the the feeling on one side of your body is very strong, but on another on the other side or in another part of your body, it's not very strong. So then you can focus your aware, awareness where it's not so strong. And it will become stronger until it becomes uh, uh, more, more and more equal in one side to another, or one part to another. Okay, so this, uh, this is an interesting thing to try. So let's try it, and uh, 
maybe instead of doing the whole body right now, because otherwise it, it might take too long, I'm going to guide you through this. Instead of doing the whole body, we'll just do the, uh, the upper body. Okay? So close your eyes and settle in and get comfortable. Relax your whole body. You can just follow the breath for one or two or three breaths at the nose to begin with, just to take advantage of the awareness that you've been developing over the last few days. Now shift your attention to the abdomen and observe the sensations that are produced by the breath there. As well as you can, notice the beginning of the in-breath and the end of the in-breath, the beginning of the out-breath and the end of the out-breath. Now move your attention away from your abdomen and place it on the front of your chest. Explore the sensations that are present on the front of your chest. And particularly, look for any sensations that are changing with the breath. Place your attention on those sensations and follow the breath. Now move your attention to your left shoulder and observe the sensations in your left shoulder in the same way. First become clearly aware of the different sensations that are present and then investigate them to see if any of them are changing with the breath. Now move your attention away from your left shoulder to your right upper arm. With your mind, explore the sensations that are present there. If there are any that change with the breath, then follow them.
Move your attention now to the lower left arm. Explore the sensations. If you're able to find any to change with the breath, then follow them for a little while. If not, just keep exploring. Now move your attention to your left hand. And of course, do the same thing here. Take your time to carefully explore the sensations that are present there. Find some that do change with the breath. Don't get too excited, just follow them for a while. Now, move your attention away from your left hand. Place your attention on your right shoulder. Having identified sensations that change with the breath, follow the breath. If you can, see if you can even identify the beginning and ending of the in-breath. Maybe even the beginning and ending of the out-breath as well. Now move your attention from your right shoulder and place it on your right upper arm. And let's do it again. Now move to the lower part of your right arm. Carefully investigate the sensations, looking for any to change with the breath.
now move your attention to your right hand. We'll do the same thing there. Okay, now we're going to start putting these together. First though, let's go back to the front of your chest. Follow the breath at the front of your chest. Try to have as clear an awareness as you can of those sensations. You can identify the beginning and ending of the in and out breath as well as you could at the tip of the nose. Wonderful. Try that. See if you can. Now shift your attention to the left shoulder again. Become aware of those sensations that you earlier found that changed with the breath. And without losing awareness of them, add in the sensations from the chest again, so that you're observing the front of your chest and your left shoulder. Experiencing the front of your chest and your left shoulder, you breathe in and you breathe out. right shoulder, chest, left shoulder, right shoulder, all together. Expand your awareness. Add your left upper arm. Add your right upper arm. If there were sensations in the lower part of your arms that changed with the breath, 
See if you can become aware of them without losing any of the other sensations that you're already aware of. if you felt some changes that took place with the breath on your hands, add that in. We'll just take a little time to let our mind settle down from the disturbance of this car. Now you're experiencing the whole upper body with the breath. If you shift your attention to your left shoulder without losing awareness of any of the other parts of your upper body, notice how the sensations there immediately become much clearer. Experiment a little by moving your awareness around, remaining aware of everything in your upper body, but focusing for short periods in different places. You see how you could do that with your whole body? It'll take a little bit of practice. How many of you were able to feel sensations of the breath in your uh, lower arm? A few of you. And your hand? Yeah? Yes, of course. And when you first move your attention to one particular part of the body, first of all, your mind has to uh, find everything that's there. And then to make that discrimination that, you know, of those sensations, which ones are changing with the breath and which aren't. So we should only focus later on on the sensation of the breath. Yeah. But you don't need to exclude, you don't need to deliberately exclude the awareness of anything. What you'll just find is that as you naturally try to become more aware and stay aware of the sensations that change from the, with the breath, that the other cha- uh, sensations just kind of fade into the background. I see. How many of you noticed that while you were doing this, or perhaps I should state it differently, how many of you as you were doing this, didn't notice the sensations in your legs. Legs? In your legs. Yeah. Yeah. Right? So that's, 
when you're focused on one area, then you, you kind of cease to be aware of uh, yeah. other sensations. I, I still don't understand. You mean the sensation is uh, inside the energy or just the, the skin feeling? Um, what, well, what I'm asking you to explore is any sensation, whether it's skin feeling or energy inside, that changes with the breath and use that as meditation object. Okay. What I was asking just now is, did you notice that while you were focusing so closely on the upper body that you ceased to notice the bo lower body, that you kind of forgot about it and weren't aware of it really uh, at all? Did you notice? Uh, did you notice that there weren't any thoughts or? Thoughts became much less frequent, yes? I didn't lose any hand because I'm not sure it's aware of it or not. Mm -hmm. But since uh, most of the sensations come from uh, the, the skin, because the, the breath in expansion of the chest, mm -hmm. so shoulder effects and arms. Yes. yes. Uh, so I didn't feel anything from here. Yeah. 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 Yes, those, the sensations from your skin are. As, because of the movement are the most obvious. They are the most obvious, but there are subtler sensations that you become aware of, including very subtle uh, energy sensations that particularly in your hands and things like that, where, where, there is, where there's no movement to mask the energy sensations. Once you become aware of them, then they're the, they're the predominant sensation that changes with the breath. After we try to connect these uh, areas together, mm -hmm. and we try to uh, sensation as a whole, mm -hmm. uh, I find I need to, you know, like a scanner goes through everywhere and try try not to see it. So mm -hmm. from here to here, go away. So okay. I also take as a whole, just kind of a different, go to different areas here searching for it. Well, yes. Yeah, so at first, we went to different areas searching for it, and then we added them together then went for the larger area. And actually the one thing I should have done, that I forgot to do, <laughs> the last thing we should have finished up was by bringing our attention back to the tip of the nose so that you could notice how much clearer and sharper your awareness was there after doing this and, and become aware of the, of the stillness of mind that you have. I, that's the best part and I forgot to thank you. Though. You just have to do it on your own. But yes, you, 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 uh, that's the procedures. First, you know, focus closely on one area so that you can become as fully aware as possible of which sensations are there and which ones change with the breath. And then subsequently, you combine them together. Why do we need to go to this order, uh, left shoulder and uh, right arm? The order doesn't matter. You know, I, I started with uh, I, I, I started with the front of your chest. Sometimes I uh, do this, and we start with the front part of their foot. You know, the order is not important. I mean, you personally may find that um, it works better for you starting in an area where the sensations are most easily detected. Or you might find that you prefer starting in a place when they're, where they're most difficult to detect. So, you know, that will be up to you. And there's nothing special about right or left or upper body or lower body. I, I suggest that uh, you practice this uh, like half of your body first, like upper body or lower body. And uh, when you feel, when you've done it a few times there, and, and, and uh, maybe twice or three times, and, and you feel really comfortable with that, then do the other, same way, two or three times, and then see if you can do all of your body except for your head. And then you might the next time try exploring the awareness in your head, and then add that to your upper body, that sort of thing. So over time, just work towards uh, expanding uh, Eventually, being aware of the whole body at once, but keeping in mind the objective is always just to increase the power of your mindful awareness and to uh, 
to become as, as single-pointed as you can. As, as stop the flow of thoughts, even if it's just for a little while. Stop the flow of thoughts. Uh, be enough concerned with observing the sensations, one kind of sensation in one part of your body, that you forget to pay attention to the sensations elsewhere, or that you forget to pay attention to sounds. Okay. Um, I take Sean and then Tracy. Okay. Yeah. Sean? I think the combination of the feeling of, the, of your breath is very important because it could you at the present moment. Is that right? Yes. That's right. Tracy? I just want to clarify like, when you say sensation. So when we move the attention to the abdomen, so not only just we observe the rise and falling of the abdomen, but there's like contraction of the intestine. Um, and like it, different intestines kind of moving at different rate. And then when you mm-hmm. move that back to the chest, um, like the contraction of the lungs, um, difference between the left lung and the like right lung. Is that all included when you say? Uh, yes, that, that's. That's all, all included, and you know, starting of course with the most obvious sensations, but then there's also uh, other sensations that are not so obvious. And in the abdomen and the chest, everything's moving with the breath. <laughs> so, yeah. So there's a lot. That, there's a lot to explore there, and there's a lot to focus on. But it's not. Uh, we're including in any any sensation, anything that appears. Uh, through the sense doors to the mind, that's that's uh, that is is directly related to the breath. Then that's. And uh, once we master this technique, uh, shall we still go back to uh, observing the breath from the top, from the tip of the nose? Yes. As a matter of fact, this is what the way to do this practice is. You start out uh, doing your your sitting practice. Uh, at the tip of your nose, and then you do this practice, and you might spend, you know, say, twenty minutes at it or something like that. Uh, or, uh, well, and, and that's not even just you might spend, for example, ten or twenty minutes <laughs> doing as much as you feel like. Then you bring the attention back to the tip of the nose. The primary objective is still at the nose. A primary, we're, yes. We were still trying to sharpen the. That's right. This, this is a sort of an auxiliary exercise to help improve the quality of our concentration and the quality of our uh, uh, awareness. And so we come back to the tip of the nose to enjoy the result of that and to sustain it as long as possible. So for example, you might spend 20 minutes doing this, come back to the tip of the nose, and for the next 10 minutes your mind is almost free of thoughts and your awareness is very clear. But over that 10 minutes, uh, you gradually start to have more thoughts arising and, uh, and the vividness of your perception diminishes. So after 10 minutes, you may decide to go back and repeat it and sort of re, re-strengthen that. What's the different function between the uh, tip and nose sensation and the whole body sensation? What is the different function? Uh, it's just in, in the rest of your body there's two things one is that in some parts of your body the sensations are more subtle and so the, the, the function of observing those is because it's a, it's a, a challenge that requires uh, more awareness and the other thing is just simply that we're observing in larger and larger area at any one time. So, uh, it um, one way of putting it is it takes more mental bandwidth to pay attention to a larger area. So there's less left over for random thoughts about, you know, lunch and things like that. Okay. So this is just an auxiliary. We should probably do it 
like 10, 20 minutes out of the hours to... That's right. And the appropriate time, to, when you're in, uh, the most appropriate times to use this practice is when you are in uh, the fifth stage and your main interest is uh, sustaining uh, uh, a high level of mindful awareness and overcoming dullness. This is a good time to employ this practice to, because of, of the way that it heightens your awareness. And then what you'll, what you'll do is you'll go back to the tip of the nose and then try to sustain that heightened level of awareness for as long as you can. So this is to address dullness. If we don't have dullness, should we even practice it? Uh, well, it's a, in the fifth stage specifically where uh, the object is to overcome dullness and not only to overcome dullness but to even increase the level of mindfulness. That's a time that it's appropriate to use. Um, it's not a practice for overcoming dullness. That you know, when when you're sitting there and and, and you start to sink into dullness, it's not a practice for overcoming that sinking into dullness. It is a practice for overcoming the tendency of the mind once it's gotten used to practicing at a pretty at a particular level to to want to just get stuck there and. Uh, uh, you know, you'd be susceptible to dullness if you don't force the mind to become more aware. Okay. The other application of this is in the sixth stage of the practice, where uh, you're now ready to try to overcome all of the subtle distractions. Uh, by the subtle distractions, we mean the thoughts that keep coming through your mind and the awareness that you continue to have of uh, environmental sounds and, and other bodily sensations. So they're, they're still present in the back of your mind and you'd like to have those subside. So in the sixth stage of the practice where you're wishing to overcome subtle distractions, this is a, a good practice because you do this and you come back to the awareness at the tip of your nose and for a while there's not much thoughts and there's not much awareness of these other sensations. And then as the thoughts begin to intrude again, you do it again. But you keep trying to sustain that, you know, when you come back to the tip of your nose, you keep trying to sustain that single-pointedness as long as you can. So this is a practice that is particularly suited to be used in the fifth and sixth stages. You can use it any time before the, before you get to the fifth stage or before you get to the fourth stage, you might find it's not a very effective practice because there's still much too strong a tendency of the mind to, uh, to drift around from one thing to another. But it's potentially useful at actually any stage, but I'm, I'm just saying early, earlier on you might find it's less, it's less so. And then always to, to have used this and attain some mastery of it, then any time you feel the need either to establish a, a stronger concentration or stronger mindfulness, you can do this for a little while. Okay. All right, so you have one more tool to use. Huh? And I uh, guess it's time to go to lunch. So, thank you very much. Thank you.